Hello, welcome to Skyward Hacks. Today we'll talk about Chat GPT, OpenAI, Open AI and Copilot. Lots of buzzwords there. And I've heard about this for at least half a year. And Open API, Open AI and Chat GPT is a little like big data. Everyone is talking about it, very few has actually done it. Everyone has an opinion, very few have actually tried it out. So I was in that category as well until a couple of weeks ago when I finally sat down and tried out different things. And uh, I wanted to share with you what I've learned over these uh, couple of weeks and how I integrated this with Emacs. So let's get started. So OpenAI and ChatGPT in Emacs, as well as Copilot, and these are different things. And when people talk about them, they're sometimes uh, inter interchanged. Um, so OpenAI is a company and it's the underlying technology and ChatGPT, that's a chatbot that uses OpenAI. Open that's how I, that's my understanding of it. Um, so uh, ChatGPT, uh, you may have tried out or seen the web client. So if you sign up for at openai.com, you can get a chat and you can have a lot of fun with that. Um, but in order to use it in Emacs and other places, uh, you register an, um, an API key and then you can use their API. And there are various interfaces in Emacs to use it. Uh, I tried it with three, GPTEL and C3PO and one which is called Code GPT. And of the three, I like C3PO the best, absolutely. So that's what I will show you today. And this is one way to configure it. I just git cloned it, I said require, and I got an API key. Is this is the open AI key? Sorry. Uh, that you get from the openai.com website. And with that, you're set to go. So if you go into Emacs, you can do C3PO, and then you can do dev chat or regular chat. I am a developer, so I normally used to do developer persona. And I can say things like, uh, create a C program that plays an MP3. And then it contacts api.openai.com and eventually you will get then um, a C program that plays an MP3. Um, it also help, can help you out with a build descriptor. So here, here we go, here we have, here we have the C program. It's definitely a good starting point. Uh, and you get some notes with it as well. So, um, and you can follow up and you can say things like reply and you can say, um, how, do, how do I build this code? You know, do I need a net file? And let's see what it comes up with. So I find, um, Using ChatGPT like this, it's uh, it's good for research. It's kind of like using Google, but it's more focused and it um, creates more concise answers and that are more geared to my context. So I find this, I, I use it a fair bit for research um, before starting out coding or mid coding or writing documentation. Um, I find that quite useful. So here it has even created a make file for me and I can copy and paste that into my project. Um, another thing which is nice is if you have, let's say, so that's how you set it up, yeah. And then you can ask it to create a program for you or parts of it. And then you have other things like you can explain the code or you can correct the grammar. So I'll show you that as well. So here I have a Java class Redis sockets resource and I have a set method and I can mark that and then I do C3PO explain code and then it will mix 
make sense of my code and explain it to me in plain English. And of course, for a simple function like this, it's perhaps a limited value. Uh, but you know, if you're starting out with a code base and you don't know the code base, this can be useful. I definitely see that. Um, I also find it useful for writing documentation on code. So this could be, you know, a starting point for creating your Java doc. Um, the last feature I want to show you um, with C3PO is that you can say, uh, if I write hello world, how are you? And I don't have the question mark. And then I can do C3PO correct grammar. And then it gives me a diff buffer uh, with my change here which is in red and then the green is what it would have changed. It would have capitalized the hello and it would add a question mark at the end. Uh, this even works, you can ask it to do it in line. So you could um, C3PO correct grammar and then replace <laughs> it replaces in line. The uh, funny bit here is that it, act, it says afterwards what it did, so this is not perfect. I find this work, working better in text modes like marketing, uh, but here is in the Java. So again, it's a, you cannot trust it completely, you know, blindly, but it's a good starting point. Uh, so I will just, yeah, yeah that's all right. Okay, so that's C C3, C3PO, I recommend it. Um, it's not an LP yet, but uh, it was fairly easy to install git clone and then require and then set the variable with the API key and you're done. And now to something really magic. Uh, it's Copilot. That, this is perhaps the most hype one, at least in developer circles. I've heard about this for a long time. This comes from GitHub, Microsoft GitHub. And um, I've seen it demoed in Visual Studio Code and a lot of people are really excited about it. And again, as very many other people, I was quite skeptic, skeptical uh, to this. And now I finally tried it out and I must admit it's quite useful. Um, you, still need, must, you, know, you still need to pay attention to what it's doing and you can't trust it always. And I had several cases where we developers who have worked on this code base for 15 years will come up with better solutions than Copilot. Then again, it's a good input, it's a good starting point, and sometimes it's smarter than this. So, and this will just continue improving, um, but I don't see it as a threat to developers. I only see it as a tool, a guide, an assistance. So in order to set it up, you add it to the little path, require editor config in the S library that you probably already have because it's super useful and then require copilot. And once you've done that, um, then of course you need to sign up, sign up for it at GitHub um, and then do copilot login and then you get a one-time code from Emacs and you paste that into a web browser and there's some some uh, setup happening there in, in the browser and connecting to your account and stuff. Um, but that's basically it. You're done and you add copilot mode to the program mode hole. That's what I did because I wanted wherever I program, I want it. But of course, if you want to be explicit on when to use copilot, you just don't do this and you enable copilot mode in the buffer where you're at, then you only get it there. Um, I like company mode for completion, so this is something I copied from their website to get company completion working. Actually, I found it working without this, um, but then sometimes, um, what's it called? Company will grab the tab. So if company already has a completion and then Copilot also has a completion, then without this configuration, I found the company then wins the regular company completions. So anyway. Um, that's it, and then you enable copilot mode. So let's try it out. Uh, let's see, copilot mode. Uh, there. So now 
I could write some documentation, I can make a comma here, and then Copilot inserts using a socket connection. And I hit tab, and that actually is then enter into my buffer. And I save, I have better Java done. Uh, if you then have a look at all the methods, I have set, implemented set and get against a Redis uh, server using socket. And if I would like to have a delete as well, I can just do how is that? public space um, void delete, and it should figure out. The rest by itself. Here and I hit tab and now I have a delete command. Pretty cool and uh, of course I need and it and I need something more. I also need param oh, pa, no, is it? Pa, pa, um, still need to know a little bit of Java and it definitely helps. Now in order to create the Java doc and just did the opening comment here and then copilot autocompletes the rest. Gives me a starting point. Um, it also understands other things like I can open the build descriptor for this project and I can create a comment and I can write this is. And if I had copilot Okay, I need to enable it. Okay, this is a sample Maven pump file. That's not true. This is the build file for the trip project. That's much better. And if I go in here, you can see I don't have a na the name, the name uh, element. I haven't defined that, and it will just suggest it because that's normal in a pump that you have a name as well. It defaults to the artifact ID. So if I only need if I want that to be the name, that's why I hadn't defined it. But you know, it's nice that it's aware of Maven palms. So all in all, I find it's a really good um, help. It's like having a pair of programming uh, buddy, but you can't really, you know, blindly trust it for everything. This to do here, for instance, doesn't make any sense at all. Great. Uh, command, yeah, but it's um, I don't know, pp substring doesn't know what to do with it. No, that's it. And if I create another public method, does it have it? Does it have a good? All right. So then it discovers that well, you haven't, you don't, you don't have a default constructor. So I'll create one for you. Uh, yeah, and if again to illustrate the documentation default constructor, really cool, right? So that's it. Uh, so in summary, I would say C three PO Chat GPT, which gives you an interface with Chat GPT, is a really good research assistant. I use it for um, researching things, documentation I'm writing, and as well as uh, the programs. Uh, I use it a lot like this. Um, let's see, C three PO. Uh, C3 dev chat. And I say, like, for instance, uh, which version of system they introduced dynamic user? And it was introduced in version 233. And then I can go in and I can say, okay, um, C3 people. Reply which version of system D is in uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7. And it says the initial version was 2.19. So, really, really nice. Um, what does the system D option dynamic user do? And it looks this up on the internet and but it's, I find it's more to the point than just looking it up in Google. And it, when you look things up in Google, is Google is great, uh, but this is you know of higher quality, I think.
So that was the wrong workspace. Um, that's it. I think this is all I want to show you guys. Uh, so for research, C3PO is real good, and then Copilot as a pro peer program buddy. Don't trust it blindly, but use what it gives you as a learning experience or as a starting point for your programs. Uh, there are some more links for you to delve further into this matter, and I'm sure that the the te underlying technology will continue to improve. These are still early days, and the same goes for the different editor plugins, and especially then the Emacs plugins. They will uh, continue to improve. Uh, that's it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.